Hello everyone, thanks for joining me today. My name is Yvonne Heath with Love Your Life to Death and I'm so happy to have in the studio Nina Spencer. Nina, after many, many years in a career, uh, decided to blaze her own trail, became a keynote speaker and went on to write two books, one about finding passion in your profession and the other after climbing Mount Kilimanjaro wrote about her life lessons. Absolutely incredible, also a great speaking coach. I can attest to that because she is one of my coaches. And also we have Frank Soriano who did the same after many years of a career, blazed his own trail, wrote a book called Beyond the Perimeter, teaching us about becoming leaders in our own life and is also a keynote speaker. They are two of the most incredible people I've had the pleasure to meet. And here's a short clip. So Nina, I am so pleased to now consider my friend, is also a conference keynote speaker yes. and a best-selling author. And I have her books here. First one is Getting Passion Out of Your Profession, How to Keep Loving Your Living, Come What May. And Nina went on to, I love this part, climb Mount Kilimanjaro, not only climb it, but uh, write a beautiful book. Thank I you. love your books. Uh, you. A beautiful book called A Time to Creep, a time to soar, lessons learned for work and life from climbing Mount Kilimanjaro. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Thank I will you. also add that Nina is an amazing uh, mentor and coach for speaking clients such Thank as you. myself. Yes. Yes. So welcome. I'm so happy you're here. Well, I'm delighted to be here. Thank you for having me. It's yes, my pleasure. So you were not always a keynote speaker, mm -hmm. and I, that is what I love about our st or your story because you blazed a new trail mm -hmm. after many years of a different profession. So can you tell me about what you did before mm -hmm. and what the catalyst was that started this new career? Yes, right out of university, like so many university students, I was worried that I wouldn't find uh, a job, but mm -hmm. I did in fairly short order in the Ontario public sector. And in fairly short order after that, I sashayed my way within the organization to human resources. And I eventually ended up in what, what was called then corporate training and development. And then of course it morphed into organizational development and so on. Uh, as, a, as an internal professional development workshop facilitator. So I was there for 17 years. Mm, and then there is a story yes. that uh, caused me to decide with the rose still on the vine, I mm -hmm. still liked working where I was. Mm -hmm. However, something happened for me and I got that butt kick, that little fire in the belly sort of thing. And mm -hmm. I decided to leave after 17 years, a secure job, a stable job, what about your pension yes. and all that kind of stuff. People would be up in arms, yeah. what are you doing? Yeah. Yes. And I went entrepreneurial. Frank is going to share with us after 30 years, uh, what did you do for 30 years? I'm going to let you share because sure. it's so many different things. Uh, I was employed by the Workplace Safety and Insurance Board and I'm very proud of that for mm -hmm. 30 years. I started off as a rehab counselor and then went into training. That was the first 10 years. Then, as I tell people, I crossed into the dark side and went into a management position, uh, various management positions, and I spent the last 10 years working as an internal consultant focusing on leadership, leadership development. Mm -hmm. I was uh, more focused on trying to move the culture of the organization, and uh, leadership has always fascinated me, actually, from way back from, uh, from high school, because, as you know, I don't believe that leadership is pertinent just to a position or a title. That's right. right? And uh, as I make the point in my book, which I think is a significant point, you need to be able to lead yourself before you lead others. So you don't need to be in a formal leadership position to actually lead yourself or lead others. That's correct. So Beyond the Perimeter right. is the name of your book. Yes. So when you say that, what does that title mean to you? So, so the fact of the matter is, Yvonne, we are governed by the mental models that we either uh, inherit unconsciously or develop consciously. So I'll give you a very practical example. So when my son learned to drive, he learned to drive obviously on an automatic. Mm -hmm. And his mental model of driving a car is an, an automatic transmission. So one day, my father-in-law happens to own a dealership. I come home with a standard and I said, you know, let's go for a drive. I'd like you to drive. So he gets in this car and he looks at the car and he goes like, what's this, yeah. right? His mental model needed to be reworked because right. the mental model that he had would limit his capacity to actually be able to drive a standard. The honest truth of the matter is, is that we are all governed by these mental models that we don't really consciously think of. Right. Uh, I have two children. The mental model that I had of my children was probably uh, bringing up my children was inherited from my parents. So I had to actually re-examine that and say to myself, 
do I really want to impose the same mental models? And so a mental model essentially has a boundary or a perimeter. Mm -hmm. And my okay. point is, the reason I called my book is we need to think beyond the perimeters mm -hmm. that are established by those mental models and reflect on those things and how we want to move forward in our own lives.